This is Master Alan, and welcome to another Parents' Corner. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about doing hand striking drills with a set of hand pads. Um, there are a couple of different ways you can practice these things without pads at home. Um, there are certain aspects of the drill you really, really need to have pads to do it, but there's a lot of stuff you can do without pads. And so, depending on how often you're training at home, whether or not it's worth it to order a set of these or get a set, Obviously, you can always support the dojo and purchase pads through us, but I don't want these Parents' Corner videos to basically be a series of commercials. Um, I really want to focus in on helping you have things you can do with your littles that are going to make them better martial artists and give you something fun to do and connect you uh, to their martial arts training. And now, with this style of hand pad, what you're going to do is you slide your hand in, and there's a little loop on the top that you'll grab with your finger, and you can either slide the hand through this way, where your fingers slide through. Most of the time, I'm most comfortable hooking my fingers over it so that I'm, I'm sort of partially making a fist to pull this tight to my hand so that it'll stay still. Now, once you got the pads on, then you want to make sure of a couple of things. I don't ever want to put the pad right in front of my face or right in front of my body in general. I want to have the pads off to the sides. And I want to be really aware of my shoulders and my elbows. So if I've got my arm locked, then when they hit it, that's going to put a whole lot on my elbow right away. And so by the same token, if I've got my hand so that my shoulders sort of flush, well then when they hit it, my body doesn't have an easy way to sort of get with this motion. So what you want to do is you're going to have the pads in front of you, angled slightly inward, okay, elbows bent and down and your hand in front of the shoulder. The closer to the same plane that your hand gets with your shoulder, the more you're putting yourself in a position where it's really easy to get something messed up. And so if you have problems in your neck or in your shoulders, then you really want to avoid that. Now, depending on the height of your little, you may need to come down, or you may be able to stay up here and just sort of work them this way. But the details you want to focus on when you're doing the punching drill, start hands down to your body, and you're going to hold up one pad at a time. And so instead of holding up both pads at the same time, you want to hold up just one. Another thing you want to be careful about as we do this is you don't want to hold the pad right next to your head. And so as I lift this up, it's going to go out and forward in front of me with that slight angle in. And if I'm down on my knee, it's the exact same thing, just the angle of my elbow is going to be a little bit different. I don't want this to be over here. What I'm trying to avoid is having it where when they punch, if they slide off, I don't want it to angle towards my face. And so with this slam, if they're punching, and sort of catch the wrong edge, well the way this can open, it's really easy for me to get bopped in the beak if I'm doing that. So if my hands are out in front of me, then even if they miss or slide off or whatever, I'm not in as much danger of it coming towards my nose. And now that brings us to the next part about this. Part of this is brain development, part of this is safety. You want to have them punch across their body instead of same side. So if I hold up my right hand, I want to have my student punch with their right hand instead of their left. And so if they punch with their left, here's how it's a safety thing. That left hand traveling towards this pad, if they miss, that's more likely to come towards my body. Whereas if they're punching with the right hand because it's going across, if they miss, then it's more likely to keep going in this direction rather than towards me. And having them have to rotate their body and reach across in order to punch is gonna help a lot of that brain communication that we're trying to stimulate already. So, step one for this, hands down, and you hold up one at a time, and you have them hit it. And now, most of these drills, what you wanna do is start in sort of a rhythm, and then you can get a little bit faster as they get comfortable. And the more often you do this, the faster you'll be able to start and still have it successful. And so I'll hold up a pad, I hold up a pad. As they get into rhythm, I can start changing the angle of the pad a little bit so that they have to track it with their eyes and reach out and touch it. If you haven't watched our blocking video yet, we sort of talk about how um, part of these drills, part of the goal is to teach them how to connect what their eyes are seeing 
and where your body is going to reach. So it's it's sort of a hand-eye coordination thing. It's just in a little bit different context than for other sports and activities. If they get really, really comfortable punching and you're ready to kind of take this up to the next level, then you can start actually having them block while you're wearing these. And so they might punch, and then as this comes down, I can swing the other side and they've got a block pattern. And this drill lets you kind of integrate a bunch of different skills. And then you're just gonna, all right, I hold it up, I swing, I hold it up, I swing, maybe I swing again. Maybe I have you do three punches in a row. And you have them move their eye level and work them side to side, and that's also going to help them work on their balance. So this is a little bit about how you can integrate these into training and what they're really good for. Um, there's other stuff you can do with pads if you have pads, but all of this, I can take the pads off, and I can have them practice punching towards my hand. If you're gonna do this, you wanna make sure they're not punching too hard at first. You both wanna have like sort of a settle into a period. And I wanna take any rings off. Um, because if they punch the ring, that is gonna be rough on their hands, okay? And if you're gonna have them practice blocking with your arms, which you can do, then you want to make sure you don't have bracelets or watches or anything that, if it makes contact, is going to be a little bit harder than your normal body. And so like a ring or a watch can behave kind of like a tiny brass knuckle. And so that's why we want to make sure we're not training with any of those things on it. Even um, sometimes like the soft bracelets, like there's like the, the rubber ones and stuff like that. Generally, it's a good idea um, just to, to have all of that stuff gone before you start practicing just for safety. So that was this parent corner, talking a little bit about some hand drills, and we'll get into this just a little bit deeper in some more videos in the future. Thanks for joining me. See you again soon.